my wife taught me to thank people. My wife. I grew up in a very different home and atmosphere where our servants are servants. Oga is Oga. My father used to slap his servants. One driver, one day, we're driving. The didn't do it. My father gave me that slap from behind. Pa, pa. If I won't forget that day, near that uh, um, finish station, in that Shaga Road, the driver pulled over. I said, Alaji, Mishimo, ah, Claude, Mishimo, he threw the key and he went. <laughs> the man, my father gave him that slap. Pa, pa. The man pulled over. I won't forget because we were in the car with my father. The man pulled over. I like you, Claude, Mishimo, Mishimo, Mishimo. He threw the key down and he walked away. My dad said, You're bad, Alaji, yeah, you're bloody fool. I can drive my car myself. He entered the car, started his head, and he moved away. And I'm like, Why is this man doing this? I said, Okay. When I grew up, I was like my drivers. <laughs> ah! He fought it, Papa! The man got so tired, he was blinking in his hair. He just, I could not tell. <laughs> of course, you knew he couldn't come home for salary. He couldn't come home. That was the last I saw the man in my entire life. The man walked away and said, I can't forget my salary. This thing is too much for me. Because I'm sure his hair was ringing. Ah! <laughs> If you do that today, you go to court. Let God say to pick you up and say, okay, human rights. Hey, you know them. Human rights. 15 NGOs who rise up to say, let us defend you. <laughs> Does he thank? One day, my wife and I sat there. Our house girl, house girl. We just come and gave us food. My wife said, thank you, thank you. Uh-uh. So the wife said, come, come. Come, come. come, come. Uh-uh. She said, only, only said, thank you. I said, oh. Come on, honey, be polite, be courteous. I said, To who? My house girl? I pay salary? To who? Say, Thank you. Say, No, honey, you have to be kind to them. You say, Thank you to everybody. Ah, Obodo I said, Sweetheart, this is Nigeria, not America. I pay her salary. Say, You have to say thank you. My wife will say to my, my, my house girl, say, say, Thank you, darling. Thank you. I'm like, ah, To your house girl. Jesus has supported my notion. <laughs> So I like to be courteous. Because the Bible says in 1 Peter 3 verse 9 so be courteous to all men. There's nothing wrong with that. I must be courteous, must thank people. But, but I don't usually do it. My driver takes me home. I get down from my car. I don't say, I'll call her, thank you. It's not lift. He didn't give me lift. I pay him salary to drive me. Why are you laughing? How many of you say thank you to your driver? <laughs> There's something in your mind to say, does he thank him for what he's commanded to do? Don't let me even go to scripture because many of us want God to thank us for serving him. How many times have I heard it? They're not even thankful I'm singing in the choir. Who? I shove the mic. Okay, Father, they want you to say thank you. Does he accept you don't know you're serving God? In this case, there's master, God, there's servant, you and I. He says, you! And I say, but you, you should say, does he thank? And he was speaking about God and man. Does he thank the servant? I can't tell how many times we all want him to say thank you to us. In many ways, our attitude to the things of God is that, I'm even not sure in that church, God is not even saying thank you to me. Even the pastor is saying thank you. I'm not watching anymore. Are you serving me? I'm also serving him. In your heart, are you expecting God Almighty to say thank you for the things he has commanded us to do? You know, he has given us the best gift in Son on the Cross of Calvary. How else? What else should he do for us? He's given us the best. God is God. It's because we don't know who we are serving and who we are working for. If we know we are working for him, and he's a master, we are the servant. You would never expect him to say thank you. Because just like my driver does, my mom, I had the secretary once, beautiful lady. Every time she does well for me, I will send her a text, thank you very much, I appreciate that. Almost every time, she replies me, no sir, I'm only doing my job. She will always tell me that, and I'm like, ah, why is she being super spiritual? But she means it. One day I came to the office and I sat down with her. I said, then yeah, call her, then yeah, why are you doing this? I said, sir, it's my job. I'm just doing my job. I even phone, I find the phone and say thank you. I'm like, ah, 
He told me to go and buy a ticket. I buy a ticket. Say thank you. It's my job. I said, okay, go. Cool. So you know what she's saying? That if you don't say thank you, no one, no, no one, exactly. Not this point. She's saying I won't be angry. I pay, I pay, sorry, I pay, I pay. She's asking, are you paying? I said, I'm paying. Keep, keep your thanks. Pay my salary. I like, see, that's HR. Keep your thank you, just pay my salary. Can you see HR? Keep your thank you. If I say thank you to you, no salary, will you be happy? <laughs> End of the month, I say thank you very much for what you've done this week. This month, I appreciate you. Okay, what is the check? No check. This is your check. I beg for where? Keep your thank you. Give me. <laughs> so, so, it's very serious. She told me that. But of course, I will still say thank you because my wife says to me, say thank you. God say. Not because, exactly. As a matter of God say. Not as a matter of duty for me. It's not my duty to say thank you. If I say it, it's what God say. So you must understand that. Are you with me? So if I'm saying a thank you to my driver, it's God say. If I don't say it, not not spoil. Not spoil. And so Jesus gave us that parable to speak to all of us here that call ourselves Christians and servants of God. To search your heart in how many ways. Your attitude towards heaven and towards church, towards service, towards ushering, towards choir, towards media. Do you demand for gratitude, accolades, appreciation from God? Accolades. We live in an accolade center generation. Accolades too much. We ask him for accolades in every way. Every time. And he says it there. Does he thank that man for doing what is commanded? Oh, he tells us to go and win souls. Great commandment. We don't even win souls. We make it short. What now struck me? What struck me? Mm-hmm. You no, know, there are two things. Jesus, the f- greatest philosopher of all times, the greatest teacher, and the wisest man, brought it from two dimensions. Number one, the master's angle. Does he, the master, thank you? Number two, the servant's angle. Say, but you should even say, <laughs> me, I can't say that. I'll tell you. The master, does he thank you? The servant, let me tell you what you do. You should even say, we are unprofitable servant. The Greek word means useless. That I went to check it for lexicons. We've thought, say, useless, unmeritorious, unprofitable servant. We have just done our duty. Now, I understand you should not say thank you. But why should I say this one? <laughs> Sometimes I ask God questions. I say, God, okay, Abba, now, Jesus. Okay, I don't want him to say thank you. But why should I also say, I'm, I'm useless? You know, you know, I, okay, don't say your own, but I won't say my own. Look at what Christ was trying to pass across. Strong message. The parable, all of us do not live. That parable, most of us don't live it. Including me. How can, I mean, I agree that you don't have to say thank you to me. But I will not say this one to you too. Do not say, we are what? Unprofitable. Maybe if you can give me media, give me other translations of that verse 10. He said, but you should say. He said, should he say thank you? He won't say thank you. But rather, what you should even say after you have done what you should do. <laughs> Let me just do and sit down. You should even still say, ah, Hard scripture. Hard scripture. Hard scripture. Me that give me translation of verse, verse 10, if you can. See verse 10? Verse 10. We are unprofitable servants. Ah, ah. He said, this is what you should say. Christ now told us, one, forget it. Oh, he will not say this. Oh. But what you should say, after you have done those things, which I commanded you. Eh? Study with me. Most times, we have not even done the things that is commanded us. We're not even doing well. We're not paying title. We're not doing evangelism. We're not doing so winning. No, We're not living holy. Yet, we are still demanding for thank you. For even coming to church, God should be grateful. Okay, you know what? I'm not coming to church anymore. You know what? I'm not serving him anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm going to quit. I'm, I resign from being a servant of God. You should be thankful. I'm even still coming to church. Not to even obey him. 
So for you even coming, God should be thanking me for coming. Eh? You also, when you have done everything, you say, we are what? Unworthy servants. Why? We have done our duty. So the word is, we have done our duty. Can we begin to meditate on our duty? What's our duty as servants of God? What is our duty as servants of God? I'm quoting Bible, not Quran. Is there? In the same way, when you obey me, or you obey, you should say, we are on what servants who have simply done our duty. Can you imagine this attitude? Minimum. This, this, is, this is our duty. This is what God is expecting us to say and to do. He said, you must say it. You must have the attitude. You must approach the things of God like this. You must approach heaven like this. The work of God like this. If you are going to church, approach, change your attitude. Begin to change your mindset. This should be your approach. Without you expecting anything from him. Does he thank you? No, you should be going to say, we've done our duty. Eh? Give me. The Passion Translation. Passion. So learn this lesson. Passion. After doing all that is commanded of you. Me, boy, you. After doing all that is commanded of you, simply say, simply say, we are mere servants, undeserving of special praise, Yay! for we are just doing what is expected of us and fulfilling our duties. Somebody shout, ouch. Say, ouch. Merely doing what is expected of us. I did not write it. Jesus wrote it. It's there. It's a parable of Jesus. Not Casalis parable. Mere servants. We undeserving. Oh, special praise. I've done nothing. That's it. Undeserving. Thank you, media. You're smart. Undeserving of special praise. You see, we're in trouble, though. We're in trouble. Because if I don't pray some people, they don't get happy with me. And every year, most churches now do a prison service. The best worker in this department. The best. Because if you don't do it, they'll be angry. Hey! You will receive thanks from me, not from him. Be careful with our attitude. Once it now becomes something we're expecting, there's a crisis. It's there. Amplified. We are unworthy servants, undeserving of praise or reward. For we have not gone beyond our... Put your hands together. <laughs> I'm telling you. So how many of you will change your attitude from today? You see why they say I should preach it on Sunday? Because I preach on Wednesday. From today, you must change your towards God, towards service. The problem is we see God too often as our father, not our master. So we approach him as sons, not servants. That's why we don't ever appreciate him. I'm a son, I'm a son of God. So we go as father to son, you always get from him. As servant to master, you give to him. Where is our master? Is Adonai. The word Adonai means your master. Lord and Savior. Not just our Father. So we like that father-son relationship. And that's why it has, a, it has, dis, it has destroyed the church. That's why they preach grace, grace, grace. It has destroyed the church. We don't see him anymore as our master. You get the point now? He's our master. That's why we say to the Yahweh. Yahweh is master. Yahweh is not father. He's master. It's my, I can't even mention your name. The Hebrews, the Jews, cannot even spell his name. In the Hebrew Bible, Yahweh, they take the vowels out. They put Y-H, W-H. They cannot put vowels. They say they are too sinful to spell God's name. The Jews, an average Jew, cannot even pronounce God's name. Cannot even write it down. That we mother men. But you people, you Pentecostals, you, dis, you, dis, you, you make mockery of Christianity. If you see videos I see on social media, I saw one thing that I told my, my, my protocol. One man said he was praying. If you see, I said, ah. somebody said, this is why I don't go to church. They made mockery of this hallowed, hallowed thing. And we now have an, a generation that is entitled. Because the church is raising a generation of people who are entitled. 